Sorry, Genesis. There's no way I can pay for the damages. I'm only a housewife. I never have any money. I don't have any savings and I don't even work part-time. And my husband is away overseas on business. I can't ask him anyway. He doesn't know about the accident and I don't want him to find out. He'll be furious with me and he might even divorce me. You don't understand how hard this is for me. Yeah, but you crashed into my house. You should be showing more remorse. I mean, you totally destroyed a brand new house. We just moved in last week and we spent all our savings on it. It was our dream home and you ruined it. It's a miracle no one was killed. Oh, come on. That's an exaggeration. It's not like you can't live in it anymore. It's just a little damage. Nothing that can't be fixed. You're making a big deal out of nothing. What are you talking about? There is an enormous hole in the living room wall. Who the hell is going to live in a house like that? It's not safe and comfortable. The whole structure could collapse at any moment. And what about the weather? It's winter and it's freezing outside. How are we supposed to keep warm with a gaping hole in our house? And what about the security? Anyone could just walk in and rob us or harm us. We're not safe in our own home anymore. Can't you just live upstairs? When I was in high school, my friend's house caught on fire. They couldn't afford to fix it, so they just boarded up the hallway and lived in the non-burnt part. Problem solved. They just adapted to their situation and made the best of it. You should do the same thing. Just live upstairs and forget about the downstairs. It's not that hard. What? I'm not going to just live upstairs. It's not a solution. It's a nightmare. We paid for this house. We deserve to live in this house. We're not going to give up on our dream home because of your mistake. Okay, okay, I've got a solution. I'll take the house off your hands. I'm good at the old DIY. I'll do all the repairs myself. I bet you I'll do a better job of it than the building company you used. They never give it a loving touch. You'll see. It'll be better than before in no time. So where are we supposed to live? There are plenty of rooms to rent down by the docks. They used to house the families of the dock workers before the shipping companies all unionized then collapsed when they couldn't afford the demands of the workers. There are some great deals down there. You'll find somewhere. And it's your place we're talking about. You'll figure it out. You're the one who caused all this when you drove your damn car through my living room. <sighs> you saying that doesn't change the fact that I can't pay for the repairs and you don't want to put a little effort in and live upstairs. My company went bankrupt last year and I've been a penniless housewife ever since. I couldn't pay for anything even if I wanted to. And it's your fault for not having insurance. What were you thinking? Someone could lose control of their vehicle and slam straight into your house. Without insurance, you'd be screwed. That's exactly what happened. Oh, exactly right. What were you thinking not having insurance? I think you've learned a valuable lesson here. No. If you'd had third-party insurance, we wouldn't be in this mess. Don't you go try to blame me for this. Next, you'll be saying it's my fault for building a house right where you lost control. Hmm, good point, that. You have to pay for the damages. It's only fair. 200,000? You think I have that kind of money lying around? You must be joking. That nice policeman told you as much, right? You can't force someone out of bankruptcy. As I told you, I'm a housewife. There's no way I can pay $200,000. I feel sorry for you, but you're just gonna have to give up. You've had bad luck, it sometimes happens. Can't you get your husband to lend you the money? Or your parents? You can't just leave us with a gaping hole in the front of our house. The cold and the safety issues go without saying, but it also looks horrendous. Surely you can find a way to make this right. Well, my husband does have money, but he's the stingiest person in the world. He steals toilet paper from the bus station. He's a total tightwad. And things are tight back at my parents' house. My father was forced to take early retirement at 55 and just drank away most of the payout he got. I can't ask them for help. They'll disown me. Can you not make this about you? You wrecked my house and need to make it right. Don't go giving me a sob story about your family. It really doesn't concern me. I just need to fix my house. I told you I don't have any money and yet you're still harassing me and telling me to find a way. That sounds like a threat to me. How is that a threat? Find a way to suddenly give you $200,000? <laughs> you sound like the mafia. Am I gonna wake up with a horse head in my bed? A concrete ball gown, perhaps? A concrete ball gown? Look, Genesis, I didn't crash my car into your house because I wanted to, you know? It wasn't part of a master plan. Step one, 
Take out front wall. Step two, not pay for it. Your kids suddenly ran out into the road and I swerved to miss them. That's why I crashed in your house. Count yourself lucky. Would you rather have a smashed front room or a smashed dead kid? Why haven't you said anything about this until now? Were you just waiting to see how far your other excuses would stretch? Uh, if I did that, then your boy would be made out to be the villain. I wanted to save him all that. He had a bad enough experience by nearly being hit by that car. Your car? Yes, my car. Poor boy was scared out of his wits. I kept quiet about it, but you started threatening me and left me no choice. What a load of rubbish. See? With that kind of denial and refusal to hear the truth, I didn't stand a chance. I'm automatically guilty. Is that it? Do you have any proof that what I'm saying isn't what happened? Security camera footage, maybe? No, we don't, and I haven't asked the neighbors. Well, you just moved in. You wouldn't have had time to set up the cameras yet. So without a shred of evidence to disprove my account of events, you make demands of huge amounts of compensation money? That's a bit presumptuous, don't you think? Rude, even. What kind of woman are you? Ugh, look, I feel bad about smashing into your house. Who wouldn't? But like I already told you, I'm gonna declare personal bankruptcy. I don't have a penny to my name. Are you getting off on this? Having a little power trip? Does it make you feel big? Demanding huge amounts of money from someone you know doesn't have a cent to her name. No amount of verbal diarrhea is going to get you out of this. I'll get my money one way or the other. Did you have to say that? Come on, I'm under enough stress as it is. I don't have a car. Can you imagine how inconvenient that is? Unbelievable! Hi, I'm just following up on what I've overheard. Did my wife crash her car into your house? I can't believe she would do something like that. She's always been a careful driver. What happened exactly? <sighs> yes, she did. And she also said she declared personal bankruptcy recently, and there was no way she could pay for the repairs. I've just had that exact conversation with her. She claims that she has no money, and that asking you or her parents for even a loan is out of the question. She said she doesn't want to bother you with her problems, and that you have enough to deal with. So, we have a massive hole where the living room wall used to be, and no means of repairing it before winter comes. We're stuck in this situation because of her recklessness and irresponsibility. I'm so sorry for what happened. I had no idea she was in such a bad financial situation. She never told me anything about it. She always seemed happy and content with our life. I don't understand why she would lie to me and hide things from me. And I don't understand why she would crash into your house and cause so much damage and trouble for you and your family. I'm really ashamed of her behavior. I'm relieved to see you're taking this seriously. I was expecting the same brush off I got from your wife. She didn't seem to care at all about the consequences of her actions. She didn't apologize, offer any help, or show any remorse. She just tried to make excuses and blame me for the accident. Perhaps we can solve this problem with level-headedness. If this is all true, then I have no sympathy for my wife. It certainly is true. She drove her car right into our house. You can come and have a look if you need confirmation. Shall I send you some photos? She's claiming that my son ran out onto the road suddenly, and she was swerving to avoid him. But I don't believe her story for a second. Why? Do you doubt her story? Because when she crashed into our house, I called the police, of course. Nobody was hurt, thank God. So they interviewed her and us. There was never any mention of my child and her statement. Surely then was the time to say it? She only mentioned it much later when I started trying to get some money out of her. I think she panicked and thought of it to try to absolve herself of blame. I see. Hmm. Well, yeah. If she only thought to mention it after giving her statement to the police, then it does lack credibility. Well, don't you worry. I'll make sure you get the $200,000. I have to warn you, that's only a rough estimate. The actual cost could be a lot more. Right. When you have an official quote, please send it to me. I'll pay it in full. But the matter of your child needs to be looked into. If there is a chance that what my wife is saying is the truth, then we need to take that into consideration too. Oh, yes. I guess you'll want to make sure of the actual events. Of course. 
I still can't believe she'd do such a thing. It hasn't sunk in yet. She's pretty volatile at the best of times but I owe it to her to see if she's actually telling the truth. She is my wife after all. I understand. I'll get back to you when I've spoken to the police again. Right. Thank you. I'm heading home. I should be back stateside the day after tomorrow if I can get a flight at such short notice. Let's continue this then. Can you just leave work like that? This takes priority. Yes, of course. I really appreciate it. Have a safe flight. Hey, how long were you planning on ringing my doorbell? If you ring and no one comes to the door, that should tell you no one is home. It's common sense. Anyway, I've disconnected it. I know you're in there, so just open the door already. You'll regret not talking to me. There you go, threatening me again. Who's out there with you? Some of your Sicilian friends? I'll regret opening the door. I've already told you I'm insolvent. I can't even pay for my car to be fixed. I forbid you to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> What's the sudden change of attitude? Who is this? This is your husband, Charles. What? Where are you? I thought you weren't coming back for another few months. I heard about what happened and dropped everything. You've really gone and done it this time. What the hell were you thinking? Did you think you'd get away with it? Hang on a second. That's not what happened at all. I've explained everything that happened to Genesis and she started threatening me. What are you talking about? You drove your car into her house. She's trying to discuss the matter with you and you are trying to wriggle out of paying for the damages you caused by claiming bankruptcy. Uh, like I told Genesis, I'm not the only one to blame here. Her son came out of nowhere. I had no choice but to take evasive action. If I hadn't done that, we'd be having a much more serious conversation. I've heard all about that too. It seems you only remember this as an afterthought. Why on earth would you not tell it to the police? I told Genesis this. If I just told the truth, her son would have appeared to be the cause of it all. I imagine the poor little guy shouldering the blame for having caused a car to destroy his house. I thought about the burden of shame that he would have felt for the rest of his life. I was looking out for him. I was thinking of his future. How many more lies are you going to keep adding to your story? It would be best if you just came clean and faced up to what you've done. No way. I'm not paying a nickel. I'm not the one who caused this. I did nothing wrong. If you still demand that I pay, I will declare bankruptcy. 200,000 is a huge amount of cash. I can't possibly pay it. I am a victim. Her son is the real cause of this. All I did was try and save his life and this is the thanks I get? Thank you, Brittany, for saving my son's life. Now give me all your money. Now my own husband has taken the other side. I'm betrayed. <gasps> Oh, how terrible it is to be cast aside by the one you love most. There is security camera footage from the house across the road, however. Oh, and? There doesn't seem to be any sign of the child you said you swerved to miss hitting. It would appear that you swerved for some unknown reason and accelerated into Genesis' house. That is what the video footage shows. Would you care to explain that? How about telling the truth this time? There is video footage then. Yep, from the house across the street. They had recently installed the latest kind so it is shown clearly. Genesis received a copy yesterday. The police of course also have a copy. I've seen it too. I watched it over and over, trying to see if I could detect even the smallest hint of a child in the picture. However you try and frame it, you are 100% to blame. And the driver is shown clearly? Yes, it is you without a doubt. You might have gotten lucky with one of those old grainy black and white cameras people used to use, but this was broad daylight and the video was 4K quality. I could even see the top of your snake tattoo that comes up the side of your neck. And the final nail in the coffin? You are taking a swig from a can of beer. There is no way out of this. It's a DUI at the least. Probably willful damage too. Not a lawyer in the country would touch it. Not even Johnny Cochran would take the case. By trying to hide it and blame it on a child, 
you've made it exponentially worse. Did you think you'd get lucky and be able to blame Genesis son and get away with not paying anything? Wait, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Maybe I just thought I saw a kid come flying out in front of me. But it's nowhere near a DUI. I was thirsty. All there was in the fridge was a beer, so I took it. A single beer. I spoke to the police right after it happened and they didn't breath test me. What does that tell you? So what are you trying to say? You know there are laws in this state forbidding open alcoholic drinks in vehicles. You were drunk and drove into someone's house. Somehow getting lucky that no one was in the living room, you are caught on camera drinking a beer and you would still try to get out of paying reparations? I'm astounded. I mean, I knew you were a little crazy, but I always found that unpredictable part of you fun. But you seem to be able to add lie upon lie without the slightest feeling of guilt. I'm sorry. I was lonely with you being away. Lonely? So who was the man in the passenger seat? Yes, Brittany. I saw him in the video. Oh, that's in there too, huh? I guess I should complain then. You think? This should have all been told to the police when they first arrive on the scene. You've tried to cover it up with all your lies. I was overseas, away from my family, trying to satisfy my boss in order to get a promotion, and all the while you were off drinking and driving into people's houses and having an affair? Wait, I repent. I've seen the error of my ways. I'll never do it again. I throw myself on your mercy. Forgive me. I was lonely on my own. You'd have done the same thing. I'm not a monster. I won't divorce you right away. For a start, you are now indebted to me to the tune of $200,000 to be paid as soon as your first paycheck arrives. First paycheck? You know I don't have a job. The first day of the rest of your life starts today. Get to work. First, you'll need a job but I have taken care of it. And until it is all paid back in full, I'll be watching your every move. And I've enlisted the help of your father too. My father? Why did you go and do that for? He'll disown me! This is the end! He's been very helpful. He's going to introduce you to a friend of his who owns a factory. You can start there on Monday. See, I've taken care of it. I have done my best to clean up this mess you've gotten yourself into. A factory? What do I know about working in a factory? I've been a housewife for the last 10 years and suddenly you want me to work in a factory? What, is it a clothing factory? I don't know how to make clothes. No, no, nothing as glamorous as that. It's a sardine cannery. Oh god. And you are not to quit until the loan is paid in full. That's a lot of sardine cans. But who knows? You might make line or even shift manager. You'd get a small promotion. Cheer up. It's not like it's a terrible place to work with a bad safety record and lots of mysterious injuries. And you'll be paid for your work. It could have been so much worse, making car license plates in prison. And, best of all, there is a worker's dormitory you can live in. You'll be able to cut back on living costs. Hang on, hang on. I can't do physical labor. I haven't even walked further than the mall for more than 10 years. Please, Charles. I'll get a part-time job and pay you back little by little. This is Genesis again. It would appear that Charles has nothing further he wishes to say to you. No, what? Just listen to me! Why won't anyone hear me out? Okay, let's do it inside the house, shall we? I have an agreement for you to sign. If you refuse, I'll have no other choice than to call the police. Okay, okay, I got it. I'll open the door. Hey, Genesis. Could you have a go at trying to make Charles see sense? You what? There is absolutely no way I can work in a factory or live in a dormitory until I've paid back $200,000. It sounds like a prison sentence. I won't be able to see my kids. He's taken this all too far. Too far? So you think you'd be better off in an orange jumpsuit in prison? Shall I call the police and see what they make of the new evidence that has come to light? I can easily win in court and probably get a lot more than 200 k I have all the evidence I need. The judge wouldn't take long to make a decision, I bet. No, I... You aren't in any position to make demands. Don't worry. You should be able to pay off the debt in about 15 years. Give or take a year or two. 
and maybe time off for good behavior? What? Just kidding. But I hope you enjoy the fish factory. You will probably have all the sardines you can eat. Very healthy sardines. Fifteen years of canning fish. I feel sick. Hey, you never know. You will probably be able to put your other skills to work in the factory too. You know, when the machines break or the dormitory needs a bookshelf. You did say you were good at DIY, right? After that, Charles took Brittany back to her hometown and got her settled into the factory workers dormitory at the sardine factory. Brittany's father went along too to introduce her to the owner. Apparently, it's backbreaking work loading the boxes of cans in the trucks. Working conditions are cramped, and the other workers are all from different countries, so it's difficult to communicate. The pay isn't bad once you are used to it and can work quickly, but for someone like Brittany who has never done a day of physical labor in her life, it is particularly grueling. She has to wake up early, work long hours, and endure the smell of fish all day. She has no friends, no hobbies, no fun. She has nothing but regret and remorse for what she did. I think she'll get used to it, even if it takes a few more months. She has, however, finally taken responsibility for what she did. She is focused now on paying back the money as quickly as she can. And the best outcome of all? Charles gave us the money we needed and our house now has its living room wall again. And just in case, I've insured the house against further incidents like this. I've also invested in a tough fence capable of at least slowing down any out-of-control car. It was a horrible experience, dealing with a selfish liar, but I've learned a lot from it, and everything is pretty much back to normal. For me and my family, I mean, not Brittany. But she has all the time in the world to think about it. Well, 15 years, give or take. She has to live with the consequences of her actions, while we can move on with our lives.